Welcome to the first episode of Home Abroad. I currently am in Costa Rica on the Nicoya Peninsula, but right now I am actually in a cloud. All you see around me is just white. I'm on top of a mountain in a coffee farm, actually. And basically, we are completely covered in clouds right now. Sometimes they roll through, sometimes it's super sunny, sometimes it's just downpouring, it's craziness. But this place is pretty cool. It's an Airbnb and the guy set up this entire compound. He's running a coffee farm here. There's tons of tropical fruit to pick. I've been picking passion fruit and guava. He's got a ton of oranges, different bananas. So we've been eating that fresh every morning. And of course, you cannot forget the good old cup of joe. I don't even drink coffee at all, but I feel like it's almost disrespectful to be on a coffee farm and the guy offers you fresh ground coffee, which I've never experienced in my life. Like fresh from the farm, roasted, ground, you gotta sip on some of that. So I might be a little caffeinated for me because I really don't drink this stuff, but it tastes so good, it's so fresh. The view up here is absolutely insane. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. I mean, you're on top of a mountain, you're super secluded. It's a great place to really take in my whole entire Costa Rica trip. And actually the first episode of Home Abroad is not about this place. It's about the first place I stayed in, which was very special, a really cool Airbnb that we rented for about five days. When I'm looking to get away, I usually start with the same process. I try to find a really cool place. So I'll go on Airbnb and I'll just see what's looking unique. And this first place really caught my eye for a lot of reasons. One, it was totally off the grid. It was about an hour south of Tamarindo, which is a very popular beach town. But this place was located in a fishing village. So there was nothing around. It was just this like glorified shack on the beach, all locals, no internet, none of that. Most importantly, when you're off the grid, you're living in a house, you gotta arm yourself with the supplies to survive. So we usually hit up a local market, whatever's in town, and just load up on everything. Get your veggies, get your water, make sure you get the jugs of water and just get whatever you need. We got rice and beans and just loaded up for about five days. And it actually ends up saving you a lot of money in the end. So you make a little investment at the market, but then you're not going out to expensive dinners and getting crazy with your money every night. So you really do save a good amount there. I've been on trips like this before where you're completely exposed to the elements and it can be tricky. I mean, I'm coming from New York City, which is the city that never sleeps, getting thrown into the wild. But I find that just kind of going with it, waking up when you wake up and just kind of getting into some sort of sleeping routine. And in this sense, it was waking up super early and going to bed super early. Waking up to the sunrise, going to bed to the sunset. Since we woke up pretty damn early, we had, you know, an hour or two to kind of just clean the house, to kind of prep for the day, maybe do a little reading, maybe do a little writing. And then we normally went for a morning walk when it was light enough. There was about one or two miles of just desolate beach that you could walk down. Only fishermen in the town. Everyone was super nice. So we would take a long walk. And you know who joined us on the walk? Our friend Luna, probably a good time to introduce the house dog. It's an interesting story about this dog. The owner said that basically a stray came one day, which you see all the time in Costa Rica. There are a ton of stray dogs. This dog was awesome and she stuck around and the owner just kept her. And she was the greatest dog ever because she was like the protector. She knew the village, she knew what she was doing and she really did look over you. It felt nice having an animal friend there to protect you from all of the elements. Normally after the walk, we were pretty sweaty and I was craving something nice and filling, but also cooling. So I whipped up the craziest tropical smoothie of all time. This smoothie basically contained every tropical fruit I could get my hands on. When I got to the place, I took some of the fruit that I had and I chopped it up into pieces and froze that because I knew the frozen fruit would be super cooling. I started the smoothie off with a few mango chunks, hit it with a little bit of pineapple, some papaya, of course, frozen banana, and then frozen watermelon, which is freaking fantastic. Then I peeled some ginger, chopped up a few chunks of that, 
chopped up a few chunks of celery, cut one of those fresh island avocados in half, and then just scoop that right into the smoothie maker. Then I cut off the skin of a delicious orange. I threw that in there, and then I also did that to a lime as well. Blended that up until it was nice and smooth, and oh my god, it's just the tropical smoothies, they will get you every time. It really was the best way to start off the morning. Gave me energy till lunch, such a tasty treat. Costa Rica is located in Central America, and most of Central America has two seasons. You've got six months of rainy, and you've got six months of dry. We went right in the beginning of June, so we got a bit of both. So our afternoons were either filled with outdoor activities in the sun, or relaxing inside, and of course, just enjoying the old rain. Before it was too hot outside, it was nice to get a little bit of a workout in. So a lot of times we'd roll out the good old yoga mat and we would hit some of those downward dogs. And it was kind of funny because when you're in Costa Rica, you really feel like yoga just makes sense. You're sweating, you're like, oh, this is the place for it. It just feels nice and stretchy. It's a great workout when you're in a hot environment. The afternoon was also the best time for snorkeling because it was low tide and you'd get this nice pool that would form right in the reef area so you could go out and you could just look at fish for hours and maybe burn the shit out of the back of your legs. Watch out for that protect yourself with sunscreen. The best part about having a shack on the beach is that when it was super hot, you had the option to kind of go out and explore the local beach, you know, collect shells, suntan, whatever it is, but you could also come back and you could hide in the shade because it is super hot midday in Costa Rica when that sun is shining. Hammock laying at its finest. Now that is a lot of activities in the hot sun and you start to get pretty hungry. So of course it's time for lunch. We are gonna make a fresh Costa Rican salad and that's what I had every single day. Just using all of my fresh ingredients and a little bit of leftover fish to just get the tasties in. I tossed in some sliced avocado, some chopped up cabbage, a little bit of that carrot action, some green onion, Hit it with some of those fresh tomatoes, some red peppers. You can't forget the fish from the night before. And this was the best part about it because it's almost like having like a chicken finger salad. It just makes it so much more substantial and hearty than just eating vegetables. Oh, glorious. Threw in those salad greens. And then I made a really simple dressing of just squeezing over some fresh lime and then hitting it with oil. One of the best parts about being in a tropical island is you're really just using what you have. There's not like a million ingredients to overcomplicate things. Just a quick little salad dressing was all it needed. The ingredients are so fresh and tasty. You don't need to get crazy with it. Even though we were constantly eating a lot of food on this trip, there was a lot of cooking going down, the truth is it felt almost like a cleanse. I was putting in such good ingredients to my body and I never felt bad. Just fresh fish, fresh vegetables, tropical fruit. It was amazing, something I didn't expect. And that's what I really loved about Costa Rica was how insanely delicious all the ingredients were and how good they made you feel. It's like you go into the markets and it's basically an organic market without saying it. Everything is just fresh and delicious and you really felt it when it was going down. And that kind of leads me into dinner. The thing about Costa Rican food, is a lot of people say it's very simple. And there is a truth to that because they don't need to get crazy with it. It's normally the same thing every time. You've got rice, you've got beans, you've got vegetables, and you got fish or meat. And that's all you need because everything is so fresh and tasty. And that's normally what we did with dinner. I'd cook up some beans, I'd cook up some rice, whatever vegetables I had, I'd throw those on the grill. For most of our dinners, we would just buy fish from the locals, whatever they had fresh. 
but there was one time I actually went out with them. The house we are currently staying in right over there, or house shacky thing, is located on this basically private beach area. It's a few miles of private beach. The only people that live here are fishermen and their families, of course. They have these little huts all along the, all along the beach. So it's almost like a fisherman village. It's pretty awesome. They go out every day. They grab the good old fish. You can buy the fish for them, which is great. I've already done that. But I actually wanted to catch some of my own. I brought a Hawaiian sling, like a spear, and I was trying it along the reef area, but it's very difficult. You kind of need to know the spots. You need to know what you're doing. So I talked to my neighbor. We tried to talk to him. He only speaks Spanish, zero English. But I communicated to him that I wanted to catch some fish, and he's actually going to take me out on his little boat today and go spear fishing, which is insane because I've never really done a true spear fishing trip. So hopefully I catch something, I can cook it up on the grill and have a delicious dinner. So no, uh, no big pescado, no pescado grande, but we did get an octopus, it was crazy. I don't know how he spotted it, we picked up a rock, an octopus under there, grabbed it out, starts spraying it, he's like battling it, stabbing the shit out of it, but he kills it takes out its guts, feeds that to the fish. We got ourselves an octopus. That is one fresh octopus right there. For the preparation, I blanched the octopus for an hour in some water. While that was blanching, I prepared a quick little chimichurri sauce, very simple. Just chopped up some cilantro, added some dried oregano, a little bit of fresh garlic, hit it with some lime juice, a little bit of salt, some of that spicy red pepper flake, and then just oil to finish off. That is a beautiful marinade, dipping sauce, whatever you want, a chimichurri. The octopus was ready to come out and it starts curling up. Don't be scared, octopus, they're weird creatures. They look pretty strange, but I just chopped off the tentacles, coated that in the churri and just let that marinate nicely. You got to get your fire going if you're cooking over the charcoal. So usually I would just build a fire and kind of burn it down till it formed those nice charcoal pieces. Then I just push those under the grate, got the grill super hot and just threw on that octopus and grilled it up. Spooned on some extra chimichurri sauce. Damn, fresh octopus. Served it up with, of course, rice, beans and some veggies. After dinner, it was basically time to wind down the day. You had your beautiful Costa Rican sunsets, at least when it was nice outside, and there is really nothing better than a Costa Rican sunset. You're super close to the equator, and the sun is just setting straight over the ocean. It is extremely large as well. The sun just looks so freaking large. The colors are amazing, the purple, the pinks. Everything is just looking freaking fantastic. One of my favorite views in the world, a Costa Rican sunset. Wow. You gotta experience it once in your life. Off the grid, no internet, five days, just having a good time. Basically on a deserted beach, just cooking my own food, relaxing cleansing the soul, all that good stuff. I highly recommend you guys just try to go out and see what types of places you can find in the world. Give your brain a vacation, give your life a break, and just enjoy the elements. Maybe get away from the touristy stuff, maybe get away from going to the restaurants, and just cook your own food, cook the local ingredients because you're really gonna feel connected. It's a great way to just kind of live in a place, set up shop, have a good time. Whoa! Yellowfin tuna, oh! Oh my God! Yellowfin tuna! Wow, that is good eating right there. Oh, muy grande, mucho grande. Oh, wow.